Hello guys, welcome to Tutorials Point. In this video, we are going to learn about the architecture of Android. We have been reading about Android, we are studying about Android, we will be developing applications for Android. But before we jump into that thing, we just need to know actually what Android is Android composed of. See, Android is having basically a five layer architecture, one, two, three and four. Fifth one being the Android runtime. Okay. Now, the very first layer or the bottom layer of Android is the Linux kernel. We have always heard that Android is based on Linux. Now, by Linux, we mean that the kernel of the Android is the Linux kernel. Now, what is the main work of kernel? The main work of kernel is to get the work done from a hardware. Hardware can be anything, your display, your camera, your Wi-Fi, anything can be a hardware. Now, after the kernel, we are having libraries. Now, what are libraries composed of? Libraries are nothing but some uh, some logical group or some logical instructions that we give that we want to give to the kernel to perform an action is being done by the libraries. Like we have a SQLite library, we have an OpenGL library, we have a SSL library. These all are libraries, right? Libraries can be even C, C++ library, libraries, even Java libraries, .jars can also be there. Now, in the third layer or in the top layer, we are having the application framework. These are basically <clears throat> group of instances put together for the purpose of a developer to make things easier or understandable. Like we are having an activity manager or a telephone manager, let's say. Telephone manager would be, the role would be to actually get calls, make SMS, things like that. All things related to telephony would be in the telephone manager. Now, as a developer, when we develop applications, we would be using this particular telephone manager for our purpose and we don't need to go deeper or go deeper in the libraries or to the kernel. This will help us to do the things ourselves. About this application framework, we are having some applications. Applications that are built in our phone, like contacts, phone, browser, your camera. These applications that are available in the Android phone itself are known as applications. Then as a user or as a developer, we will develop applications above this layer. We will call them user developed applications. Okay. Now let's go in deeper into all of these and study what all these are having or what these all are made up of. Yeah, that's that's our Linux kernel. Kernel is basically a com is basically involved in three main parts. First being the device driver, second is memory management, third is process management. The three main parts for any computer, for any computing machinery is these same things. What do you mean by device driver? To get the work done from a particular device. What do you mean by device? A device is nothing but say your hardware, your memory chip, your camera, your Wi-Fi hardware. Getting work done from these is the part of the kernel. He is having drivers, it is having drivers for all of these things. A driver for camera whose work would be to uh, take a picture, to turn the camera on, to turn the camera off, to turn the Wi-Fi on. This is done in the Linux kernel itself. Then we have the memory management. The role of memory management is very simple. How does the, uh, the Android OS or the Linux kernel manage its entire memory? Which uh, folder or which options having what memory, which file is placed where? This is done by the memory management. Then the third and not the last but not the least, the third one is the process management. What is process management? Everything is a process in computing dictionary. Everything is a process. If you are uh, playing a music, it's a process. You are doing, you are doing some, uh, say, some uh, operation, or you are doing, you are uh, switching on the Bluetooth. This is a process. Now these things come as a part of process management. This entire comes as a part of Linux kernel. That is the bottom layer of the Android architecture. We then move on next to the libraries. Now what are libraries? As I've already told you, some C or C++ libraries, some graphics, the SQLite, the media codecs, the browser engine, these all are a part of libraries. Then along with them, some interfaces through Java or some Java interaction also comes as a part of library in our Android architecture. So to make it very simple, some standard things that are being followed or some standard procedures that are there 
for the purpose of developer to ease them to simplify them we have made up the libraries the third one the android application framework this is basically an api interface i have already explained api stands for application uh, programming interface this is an api interface the the main work is to manage the entire application in in a single attempt or in a single way like the framework is having uh, following or you know the, these types of managers in them they these managers combine to form a framework we as developer use these managers to get our work done like we have an activity manager the work of activity manager is to manage the application life cycle this thing we would be co covering up in a separate section which would be activity life cycle in, in android then we have a telephony manager we have a content provider now what is the content provider some uh, some contents that are there in the android os and we you, we work on them we use them uh, like for example your sms sms inbox these all are basically content providers then the last but not the least the android runtime now what is the runtime we all have heard about jvm you know we have been using up is using it up and we have been working on jvm now what is jvm jvm stands for java virtual machine in a similar way android is having its dvm we call it the dalloic virtual machine now in in jvm or in jvm we will we can have a jar of a java file now in this one in android we have dot dex files you can see over here now these dex files are very better for our development why because they are compact and efficient than class files why are they compact because they they use they use less memory and have a hand since less memory is there they give us a, a better or a more improved battery power that is why we use the dex files then along with this we are having some core libraries core libraries uh, constitute of the java standard library the collections the input output these all things put together forms the android runtime to you know to sum it up in a very good way uh, the dvm that is the dalvik virtual machine plus the libraries form the runtime and dalvik virtual machine is nothing but some dex files that are efficient in class files we use dex files in android not the class files these files put up together form the android runtime so i think you have got information about the android architecture so to conclude we can say that android follows a four layer main architecture fifth one being the runtime these architecture is done in such a way that it makes the application development from the perspective of developer very easier right now stay tuned as you will be taking you through the installation of android onto your local machines thank you